So why do I feel so numb? How did this come about? Hi, I'm Roxanne Clay and welcome to part two of this mini series where we explore the feeling of numbness and we look at how we can release this feeling of numbness. And I promise that in part three, I will show you a technique that you can use every day to release this feeling of numbness permanently. So for now, I know that in part one, we looked together at the dangers of, of keeping the sense of numbness in your life. Okay, and I'm hoping that that has motivated you to reach this point where you're going, yep, I want that change in my life. I want to let go of this feeling of numbness. So I'm hoping that in part one, and I'm sorry about all the construction that's going on at the moment, but I'm hoping that in part one, you were able to identify the dangers of experiencing numbness for prolonged periods. And we were also able to recognize how it's impacting your life and why you'd want to shift this. So now what I need you to do to to get to a point where we can actually release this permanently, I need you to understand how this came about in the first place, how you have created this in your life. I've got my notes in front of me because I don't want to forget anything. This is really important stuff. So to start with, the first thing that I want you to start looking at with regards to why you've created this numbness is take a look at what's happened recently. What are the traumas that have happened to you? And I'm not talking about, they don't have to be big T traumas. I'm saying they could be very little T traumas, but what are the traumas that are happening in your life? The things that are really stressing you out? Do you have a parent that's ill that you're having to look after? Do you have a newborn baby in the house? Do you have uh, family members living with you at the moment? You know, people don't consider these traumas, but they can add a lot of stress and anxiety to your life. So take a look at what are the little, the little traumas or even the big traumas that are happening in your life. And the thing, if you're feeling numb, the thing that you won't notice is that it has added a level of stress and anxiety in your life to the point that sometimes you feel like you're overwhelmed and you can't cope and you just need to isolate yourself and be away from everyone. Okay. Now what's happened is you have experienced pain because of this extra trauma in your life. And you're trying to shut it down, which is why it's triggered this response to be numb. But I want you to go back, say a few months or even a few years. Was there a scenario like this that happened at that time? Was there another little T trauma that happened, which stressed you out and put a lot of pressure on you? You know, perhaps you were studying, perhaps you were found a new job and you started a new career. Perhaps you had a boss that was just giving you a hard time. What were the little T traumas that were happening? Again, I call them little T traumas, tongue twister, little T traumas because they are not what everyone considers a trauma. And yet, it is a trauma for you because it's impacting your life, right? What's a trauma for one is not necessarily a trauma for another. That's what I call little T traumas. Then I want you to go back another couple of years and have a look what was happening in your life then. Was there a trauma, another little T trauma happening in your life? And I want you to start piecing together a picture of these little traumas, these little stress points in your life that happened that caused anxiety and stress and caused you to shut down, caused you to want to isolate yourself from people, to want to suppress pain. Okay, so that is, is the first building block I'm putting in place for you to see how we start to create this feeling of numbness because what can happen is we start to turn down the volume. Remember in part one, we talked about turning down the volume in our emotions. So every time there's a little T trauma, we turn down the volume a little bit. When the trauma passes, we don't necessarily turn the volume back up. And that's really, that's really significant because every time there's a little, a little T trauma, little T trauma, and we keep turning that volume down, Eventually it becomes so low that we start to feel nothing. We're just like robots living life on autopilot. Things are happening around us, but we don't really involve or interact or engage with it. That's, that's you being numb and you keep turning that volume down. Now, if you're really diligent about your health, your mental health, then every time you turn that volume down, you might have done a lot of things to make sure you turn the volume back up. Now, what I'm saying is it does, this doesn't mean that you don't experience joy and happiness and love and fulfillment, but the volume on it is turned right down. So you're not actually experiencing very high highs 
and you're not experiencing very high lows you're experiencing this very con like contained set of emotions things that are very appropriate okay so that's the first building block now I want you to start thinking about well imagine okay imagine yourself as a newborn baby and uh, I've got a 14 month old at the moment um, and so I, I know I can see how they experience their emotions how in tune they are with their feelings so when Louis cries he cries and he's in pain and he wants mom and he wants to be comforted and he wants food and he wants whatever it is that he wants but he's feeling that pain he's very in tune with it and he can cry so easily and at the same time when you have him focus on something else when you suddenly give him the food that he wants or give him the mum that he might me or when you give him whatever it is that he's looking for he's people you know cynical people people like yourself who are very numb call him fickle they go oh, babies they can change their emotions so quickly but no he is really in tune with his feelings so he can suddenly switch into calmness he can even suddenly switch into happiness and joy and laughter because he can recognize that oh my god what my sister's doing is really funny and it really lifts me up and it makes me laugh and i'm in tune with that and i'm loving it and there's so much joy here okay so what I'm trying to get you present to is imagine yourself as a newborn baby and you're 100% volume, right? You're, you're all in tune with your feelings and you're aware of all your feelings. And notice how as a newborn baby, you're expressing all your feelings very freely. There's nothing stopping you. No one telling you to stop feeling. No one's telling you off. Everyone just assumes that you are allowed to express your feelings 100% any old way you like because you're a newborn baby and that's all you do people know that and they anticipate that and they expect that and they still love you for it and they still think you're adorable and they still want to be around you even though you cry like crazy and you laugh for no reason okay <laughs> seemingly no reason okay so that's building block number two here you are a newborn at 100% now what starts to happen as you grow up right this two-year-old comes along and she wants this cookie and mum's saying no i can't give you the cookie now that's too much sugar for you and then this two-year-old comes along and she wants that toy and mum's saying no i'm not going to buy that for you because i don't want you to be spoiled or you know because we don't have the budget for it or whatever the reason is and then this two-year-old comes along and he's saying come play with me come play i've got this ball come play with me and mum's saying no i've got to cook dinner i've got to, i've got the family to feed i've got to clean this i've got to do this i've got to drive over there and i've got to be busy and i know <laughs> one, one other mum shared with me that her her four-year-old said to her little sister come come mum needs to be busy and and often that's what they perceive of us they think that we need to be busy now imagine you as that two or four year old and you're perceiving your mum as yep she needs to be busy that's just what she needs you don't realize that it's actually because your it's not because your mum doesn't love you for starters you don't realize that instead what you start to think is mum doesn't love me or maybe i'm not that important to her or maybe she's rejecting me because there's something wrong with me or maybe and you start creating reasons and excuses and your mind starts trying to work out what is happening why is this happening why am i being treated in this way okay so i'm not trying to say that you've created so many stories as a young child what i'm trying to make you aware of is how things happen in your life and you start to notice how unfortunately you are not number one priority and you are not the most important person maybe your mum has a younger child that needs to be tended to or maybe your parents have to work and so maybe you needed to be dropped to kindy or daycare or whatever else and these sorts of things as a vulnerable young child can make you feel insecure and can make you hurt and feel abandonment or rejection and basically can make you feel pain and so your coping mechanism in those situations is to turn down the volume because 
you don't want to feel that pain you don't want to feel that separation anxiety or that rejection that and, and remember your parents are just being normal they are not doing this to you but as a young vulnerable innocent child these are the sorts of emotions that you come across and as you get older okay so that's building block number three now as you get older what starts to happen we are in a society let's say you start school you're about seven you're playing at school and then you fall over and hurt your knee and what's the natural instinct that most people kind of have it it's that toughen up oh harden up oh you'll be fine ah oh, stop crying stop being such a baby come on let's just go play can you see how we are in a society that's kind of creating the sense of suppression suppressing our emotions it's not good to express your emotions it's not good to express your pain in fact there are some societies in the world where you can scream as loud as you want if you're in pain you can cry as much as you want if you're in pain and that's completely allowed but in the society that we have created for ourselves and in the society that we're perpetuating with our children it's tough enough you know you've got to get through life you need to be hard you need to be resilient life is not all about expressing your feelings you can't be angry you can't just cry just because you want to you know it's not appropriate you need to behave in a particular way to be accepted by society you need to look a certain way and act a certain way for society to say that yes you're allowed to be one of us you're allowed to be included you're allowed to belong and belonging is what's important to us we want to belong the problem is when we keep turning down our volume when we keep tuning out of our feelings and tuning out of our emotions we no longer are allowing ourselves to belong that's the irony of it we've trained ourselves to do all these things and to suppress and, and tune out of feelings so that we can belong but in tuning out of our feelings we're losing our connectivity with people and we're no longer belonging we no longer have that sense of connectivity which is what we innately desire as humans we crave that sense of belonging we crave that sense of connection and so if you <laughs> If you want that sense of connection and belonging, you need to release the, num the numbing. You need to turn up the volume. I hope that gives you an idea. These four foundational building blocks have given you an idea of what is creating your numbness and how you've lived your life. Now, something I haven't yet addressed, but I will touch on now, is if you have experienced a childhood trauma you will tune out and you will have tuned out so significantly that you would have created a lot of numbness in your life all right now childhood trauma is a separate issue altogether because there is a lot going on there and you know you can still do this video you can still work through this audio but you do need to take accountability for what you experience because traumas are significant and particularly when a trauma a big t trauma happens to young children it can really impact your health your mental state of mind your physical state and your relationships okay now um okay so if if you want any help by the way with um big t traumas in childhood please let me know comment in the video below and i will create a video or you can actually or I'll get in touch with you personally and we can um, work together on that just to recap okay so there is the foundational block that as a baby you are at 100% volume you cry fully you laugh fully and you're allowed to right that is actually the ideal state that we want you to be at and people will think you're crazy if you act like that but could you imagine being able to feel again yeah number two foundational block is you keep turning the volume down every time there's pain in your life and we need to stop that pattern we need to stop you turning the volume down and just cut it off right there to cut off the knob so that you stop turning the volume down and then we're going to look at helping you break free of that need to turn the volume down building block three is the is the impact of 
you from a young baby from the ages of say zero to seven when you're just getting trained to notice that you're not actually allowed to experience the the pain and emotions that you're experiencing and then building block four is from the age of seven onwards when society so it's no longer your parents and your immediate family now it's society that's saying hey grow up and cope this is life life is tough deal with it okay now i know some of you and probably actually all of you watching this video have in your childhood created a mentality where you decided somewhere along the way that your parents were too busy for you and you had to grow up and get independent real quick and you had to take care of yourself and it's that independence that's shutting you out from belonging and connecting okay it's that independence now i'm not saying independence is a bad thing no, I want you to have independence, but I want you to have self-love, like 100% self-love independence. Like you are so connected with yourself and you're feeling your sense of independence, but you're also feeling 100% connected. So if you're one of those kids where you have decided that you are independent and you don't need people and you're tough and you can do it on your own, then you probably lived your life doing a lot of that where you are basically just constantly pushing people away saying I don't need help I'm fine yep I'll take that on I can do that you know like you're some kind of superwoman superman okay that's nice and it's a great quality to have and it's probably helped you get places in life and you've probably achieved a lot of stuff but you would have achieved a lot of stuff through a lot of effort because you've had to push through stuff on your own okay so we're not going to take away that state where you are independent. That's a beautiful state to be in. We're going to take away the efforting that you've been doing with your independence. Okay, We're going to get you back in tune with people and give you a sense of connection. And we're going to get you back in tune with your intuition. And we're going to have you feeling again, because that's what we want. We want you to feel your emotions. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I hope I haven't waffled too much, but I hope you got a lot of value out of this. Please leave a comment for me below if there's anything that you need clarity on, uh, if there's any comments that you have. And thank you so much for watching again. And I hope you join me for part three of this video series where we will go through some techniques to help you break free from this feeling of numbness. All right, thanks very much.